Hey, what's up everyone? Um, welcome back, thanks to the new people that are watching, and uh, you know, this is super lo-fi, I don't know, diary style documentary, sort of like, in your face, I don't know, storytelling and discussion, so, I haven't done really like a long video in a couple of days that I do like couple today I just I needed a break I needed some time off to think and you know collect my thoughts it's been nice to see a lot of subs coming in so I appreciate that all right so this video I, I, I like to wait and go past the first 30 seconds just for those of you who are new um, before I get into subject matter because the subject matter here is pretty spicy and when you talk about spicy stuff YouTube tries to shut you down so it's better to give it a little bit of time. Right now, I kind of wanted to discuss, like, the culture war. And this weird culture clash that I'm seeing. And I, and I know, like, everyone thinks culture war is going to be about, you know, you know, I don't know. I want to talk about, like, I guess the left and the right and, you know, these hard left politics and hard right politics. But that's, like, not even really what I'm talking about. I'm specifically f discussing and focusing in on... It sounds, it sound, again, it sounds so xenophobic. I, I hate, you, you can't discuss this stuff without sounding like, kind of weird, to be honest. It, it's, and especially when it comes from a person who's like, you know, again, I'm, I'm Caucasian, but I'm mixed, but we live in this weird, <laughs> we live in this weird country that's absorbed way too many immigrants and newcomers in the last couple of years. Like, like literally uh, 40 million people in this country, roughly, is what our population is at, at this point in time. And I would think that probably 1 to 2 million of that are, are newcomers from India. I'm going to link a video here, because I know people want me to walk around and do some walk and talks. I don't even need to. Other people are doing it. So I've got a link here for somebody in Brampton. And he does a walk and talk through Brampton. And it is, it is mind-blowing. The, the citizens of Brampton... Just like I've said in my own videos about people that I've talked to from, uh, you know, the United Arab Emirates um, and from other, you know, maybe more affluent, you know, nations, Iraq. Like I've, I've talked to people from other countries, uh, India, Pakistan. They're saying very similar things in this video, which is that there are too many immigrants coming here. Indian people are saying that about other Indian people. Too many. Um, look up the stats for Brampton, Ontario, those of you who are not Canadian or who don't live in Canada um, or in this part of Canada, look up the demographic stats and the breakdown. I mean, it's, I'm going to link the video. It's, he, he goes through that in the video. It's a True North video. Not really, I don't think I'm subbed to this, but I just came across it today. Um, pretty interesting stuff. I was actually more coming at this from the angle of a recent event, like a recent thing that had happened, an experience in my life where I, I had taken a drive somewhere. I was sitting in the parking lot waiting for somebody. They were doing their thing and I was waiting for them in the car. And then, it, and this won't be the first time that I've seen this, but it was like, it, would, it just it jumped out at me. I thought to myself, that's got to be illegal. A car drives by and it's, you know, lowered to Honda probably in a court, I believe it was, tinted windows, you know, it's, it's obviously a younger person's car, I would, I would assume, like, that sounds bad, but, like, it looks like it's, it's set up for a young man, um, the thing that struck me, though, was, wasn't those features, so pretty standard, what struck me was the side of his car that had a giant AK-47 decal, uh, with an outline of, I would assume it was, um, a region of India. Like, I know, like, you know, they are very, you know, Indian people tend to be very proud of, like, the different, I don't know, areas they come from, the different regions. I believe there's a lot of cultural value to that. Like, you know, like the Punjabi region is, I think, where a lot of these newcomers are coming from right now. So I would guess that it was probably the outline of, like, the Punjabi region with a giant full-size AK-47 decal. What? 
I've seen the odd decal of a guy with like a like a AK-47 slung across his shoulder and stuff like that, and you would assume it's some kind of like freedom fighter or rebel or something. And I believe there was a a Sikh freedom fighter that there's a sticker of him with a gun, but I mean. This just seems like I'm living in, like, some weird 1990s, like, stereotypical rap video. Like, honestly, the cliche is off the charts. Like, lowered vehicles, tinted windows, booming music, and now decals of guns. And, I mean, it's funny, like, the outline of the country almost looked like it was done in bling. Like, I couldn't quite tell, but it almost looked like it was, like, a diamond necklace, but in the, like, kind of, you know, shaped to look like the like the outline of the province or what the region or territory or whatever you would call it. Really strange. I've seen that multiple times. It's, it's almost like, I mean, from what I understand from all the research I did, when you see that, that is supposed to be an indicator that that person is indeed carrying a firearm. It basically means don't mess with me. This is not something I ever saw until a couple of years ago. And it's really interesting because during the COVID lockdown and meltdown and stuff, that's when a lot of these newcomers came in, the students especially. And it was, it was during that two year period, but there was also a shortage on vehicles. It was very hard to get a car. I remember my, my friend telling me, and then later on it actually happened to my sister, I saw, we got a letter, like, I, I, I believed my friend, but it was like, it's kind of like hard to believe, it was a weird story, but then my sister got a letter in the mail, saying the same thing, they were offered um, to have their cars bought back from them by the dealerships, because they wanted the, some chip inside, because they wanted to sell new cars, but they were gonna take that chip and like basically repurpose it. Because there was a chip shortage, remember? When there was the COVID lockdown, the pandemic lockdown in Asia, production went down and manufacturing went down for, for months on electronics. I mean, again, I know we have a short memory span, so it's hard for us to, you know, think back to two years, 24 months, whoa, 700 days, <clears throat> excuse me, like so crazy, 700 days, but like, this is, <laughs> I mean, this is the problem with our short memory spans, is that we don't recall things like this, and um, the fact of the matter is, I believe that they were probably trying to buy those chips back because of the influx of the international students. They needed to put them in vehicles. The amount of times that I wake up and hear about a deadly crash in Brampton or Mississauga, usually involving two or three young Indian men, like student age, and I mean, most of the time it turns out that they're international students once a little digging is done. I mean, do I really have to put, like, again, 2 plus 2 together? Like, 2 plus 2 is always going to equal 4. doesn't matter how much I want 2 plus 2 to equal 5. 2 plus 2 is going to equal 4 because that is, you know, the law of nature. You can't argue with math. So, when you take all the evidence, you know, influx of the students. People try to buy chips so they can sell new cars car accidents happening they're always souped up and lowered with tinted windows now I'm seeing gun decals a little, like I mean it's clearly changing Canadian culture and North American culture and but like not for the better like again like a city like Brampton when you go there the entire city is and I mean in, this is in the words of Indians it's pretty much all Indian people like, like 90 something percent. It looks like an Indian city, even the way like things are like starting to get laid out now, I believe, like the way the businesses and signages and stuff like that, like the vibe is just different. They're knocking down buildings that are older that white people currently live in, like apartments, so they can put parking garages up and high rises and condos for newcomers. You know, you have, you have hordes of white people 
white Canadians like me, that's coming from that video, that are living under a bridge and being helped by a church. Like, like, like depending on a church for whatever handouts they can. Yet you have people hopping off a plane and thriving. Like I said the other day, like wearing clothes that are better than anybody I've ever seen, dressing better. They have cars, they have homes. You know, some of it comes down to, yes, sharing, like sharing accommodations. Sure, you, you can get, sometimes you'll find in a house where there's like twice as many people as there should be. But this is the other thing. It's like, there's all these laws in place. You know, well, no, you can't rent your basement out to more than like two students or you can't you know do this you can do it It happens you're not even supposed to have a basement apartment or any kind of apartment without a window you need to have a window by law yet i have seen now basement apartments and spaces for rent that don't have windows i've actually seen a space for rent that didn't have uh, any toilet or bathroom facilities it was listed as an apartment and when i called the guy out on it this was actually on facebook like two years ago or three years ago when i still had facebook the uh, real estate guy was like, oh, well, I, I didn't mean like it's a place where you can live. I just had to list it as something. I'm like, you, you, the way you described it, it was clearly <laughs> described like it was supposed to be a living space. I mean, we, we live in like a really terrible time. And we're throwing certain cultures under the bus. And it's not even because of their skin color or race or anything like that. Like it's a... Uh, it's, it's purely economic. Everything comes down to money, like I've always said in every video. Like, it's all economics. And right now, what happened was the Eastern world caught up really fast. No, they're not, like, at our level. They're still way below our level, but they, they started to develop a lot faster. And they have a lot more of that disposable income to invest in their children than we do here. Like, it seems like here, everybody's income is kind of, like, tied up in something. Because... You know, everything has increased and with inflation and rising interest rates, uh, basically sitting, we're basically sitting in the depression, people don't want, want to say that, but like in that kind of economic situation, you know, the East is doing a lot better. The funniest thing about the whole East versus West thing is like, I was thinking about this all the time, computers and tech and AI and, you know, computer science, like this is where all the money's at now. One of the biggest ironies to me is that, like, you know, when we look at it historically, in North America, primarily America, I'm going to say, we'll point the finger at the U.S., gave those jobs away in, like, the, like I think it was, like, the 80s, basically, the 80s and the 90s. They just shipped them overseas. They didn't want to deal with them. They didn't want to do them. And I would wager that that's why, when we think of Indians as tech bros, or, you know what I mean? Or as like all Indians know computer science and tech and they're all good at this stuff. Well, I mean, that's probably why. Many of them spent, like millions of them, I'm sure. Millions upon millions. Had careers in it. Something related to it. Once we shipped business over there. And we started exporting and off, you know, doing all the stuff offshore. They became proficient, maybe at the low level stuff. But that gave them, you know the foundational knowledge to get better at the higher level stuff. Like that's like, you know, everyone says like, you know, like, oh, this is a gateway, this is a, that was like that. That was a gateway into more knowledge, right? Knowing a little bit about a computer, a little bit about software, a little bit about hardware, it, it allows you to build on that. And if you build while well, everything is changing, it's better when you when you come in later and try and catch up and learn everything at once it's a lot harder it's doable and people do all the time but it's harder i would wager that is why you know that and the fact that like china and japan also is just predominantly like you know mathematical powerhouses as well and engineering powerhouses they invest a lot of time and money in that you know it's not because like it's because we don't it's not because like they're super special and we're cheated and they're ripping us off. No, it's because it's because Western people are dumb and don't invest in those things. Canada, in fact, has some of the worst math scores in the world and probably one of the worst math curriculums, according to what I've read from many different people. Math is the core of engineering, STEM, science. 
this is why a lot of like you know when you're growing up you'll see a lot of like asian and southeast asian you know and indian pakistani kids like their their parents are sending them to like private tutors for math right it's not like they're going for like languages and, and history and stuff like that what they get out of school is good enough because at the end of the day math science that's the language that's going to take people places in this economy and we talked about this before the whole idea of like the linear society <laughs> the engineer being, engineer being kind of linear no offense um like there's a there's a place for this in a role it's needed so you, you need people to think outside the box but you also need people to be able to like stay the course and think like that this this world has enough room for all of us the problem is that economies don't often get geared towards that economies get geared towards um trying to be be self-perpetuating they want to be like um basically perpetual motion machines like a machine that just continues to generate uh you know energy and motion goes faster and faster and faster it's like that's like what capitalism i mean is in one way i shouldn't say economy it's just a capitalism capitalism as an economy like just seeks to grow and grow and grow and grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger but like you got to keep feeding the monster something right like it's an entity at the end of the day it's supposed to serve humanity but it seems like human humanity and like all of human civilization is now serving the type of economy that we're in you need an economy people have to work it's a matter of how things get done and the methods that we choose you know like again i i mentioned beyond civilization a lot it's a book i like you know he he refers to tribalism a lot not saying that we should go back to it but just saying at, at one point tribalism worked for us and that's what we used before we came together in civilizations and in, in like cultural like you know groups like cities and stuff we were more nomadic i guess right i mean even tribes can be not nomadic you have tribes these days and it still works for them you know isolated tribes so we we wake up every day seeing what we see in front of us and we think that this is the way this is it this is what we know but that's the problem like there is so many other different ways um i mean if you think about it like there's as many there's an infinite number of ways there's as many different ways to go through life and to run our culture and society as we can really think of like it's just limited to our imagination and what we're willing to try uh <laughs> we're clearly not willing to try something that doesn't have like a hierarchical power structure and that requires again you know that in order for many to or for a few to do well there has to be many below that right and there has to be a, a base in a pyramid structure right and then the top you know that would be the one percent again they they're living off of the labor and efforts off all the lower tiers and again you have like a middle tier and like a, like a slightly lower middle tier then you have the bottom like it it's not far off from that and it's like anything else when you when you when you think about it like it seems like a system like that is built to reward those who already have a lot we've gone through this before so yes it is possible to have nothing and then make yourself into something but it's a lot more difficult than it is to just like leverage what you already have to keep growing and building upon that building something from nothing is a miracle right like we're talking on the level of like creation right not many uh not many things out there can build something from nothing that that would be something that we attribute to like you know the all powerful deities of the universe right it's weird but i don't know i mean looking at the way things are right now like 
it almost feels like this culture is rapidly changing. We're, we're being forced out of our country. And the only reason for that was because this country has deteriorated so much that we had to like either invest in ourselves or look outside. <laughs>